Hi, welcome to this unboxing video for a brand new Panasonic G80 camera. Uh, this is the successor to the G7, but with a lot of improvements. It's also known as the G85 and the G81 in different parts of the world, but here in the UK it's called the G80. And uh, if you are thinking of ordering this and you're in the UK, uh, if you get your skates on, I think orders by the end of October, uh, as long as they're from an authorised dealer, uh, you get a free battery grip, and that's got an RRP of £250, so that's well worth having. I mean, it's not worth £250 for a battery grip, but that's how much Panasonic will be charging for it. So, uh, yeah, you need to check the list of dealers on the Panasonic UK website if you want that deal, but... And then you have to claim like 28 days after getting the camera. But that's well worth doing, I think. So what's in the box? Some manuals. There's like a quick start guide aimed at people who can't be bothered to read manuals. Uh, trying to get you to sign up for something. And basic operating instructions. registration and warranty details. Important, please save this box. Yeah, I don't throw boxes away. Now I've got the uh, the M, which is the one that comes with the 12 to 60 lens. So first out of the box is a lens hood. That's nice. I always like to keep a lens hood on my camera. It helps protect the lens apart from anything else. Um, it protects it far better than using a UV filter and it doesn't degrade your image quality. In fact, it enhances it. Here's the lens. It's a nice build to it, actually. It's got metal here. Sort of fairly stiff but smooth action on the zoom. That's good because on on my um, Nikon lens, uh, that zoom ring is too loose and it's very easy for it to just drift. Uh, but this has got a nice feel to it actually, and a good long range of 12 to 60 millimeters. Okay. Actually, the first thing I'm going to do is put the hood on that lens. Probably just has a you line up the things on it and click it in place. Yeah, it's not gonna it's not gonna do much to, to actually prevent flare that because it has gaps around the sides here. Uh, so if the sun's low, it's just going to go straight past that, but that's nice. Okay, in the back compartment here, we have UK plug to figure eight. That's for the battery charger. Uh, full size USB to micro USB. Presumably that's for um, getting pictures off the camera without pulling the card out, but in some cameras you can also use it for charging. I don't know if that's the case with this one. Battery and battery charger. Looks very much like my Nikon one. Except that the, my Nikon one has the plug built into it, so it just plugs directly in, uh, but that can be awkward to find a socket with enough space around it. And this one has the plug separately, so that's probably a bit easier. I'm going to take the battery out because they usually supply these with a little bit of juice in them these days. I know you're supposed to like fully charge them before you use them, but uh, I don't think there's any harm in just using them a little bit first. It's not like the old fashioned rechargeables where you had to fully charge them before using them otherwise there'd be a memory effect. You don't get that with lithium ion batteries. 
Uh, cam strap. I don't use the standard straps that uh, camera manufacturers supply. I use um, an over the shoulder sling. It's much better than carrying it around your neck, but that's there if you want it. And that's all that's in the box other than the camera itself. Which is kind of just loosely in this little bag thing, which is made of paper. I'm surprised that provides enough protection for it, to be honest. But... It's got a nice feel to it, this. Nice comfortable grip. It's one of the reasons why I decided to go for uh, one of the DSLR style body Panasonics instead of the, the cute little ones. As I do, I just like the feel and handling of a, a DSLR type camera. That's what I'm used to. Uh, I like the fact that the viewfinder protrudes some distance from the screen. Uh, on my Nikon D3300, it's quite flush with the back of the camera, and I find that I really have to sort of jam my nose into the camera to get my eye to it. But this one is much better, going to be much more comfortable to use. Nice big viewfinder area as well. A um, little notch to take the screen out, fully articulated screen. You know what this camera does if you're looking at this video. Nice stiff dials that aren't going to be accidentally knocked. And these are also have a nice feel to them. They're easy to turn, but I don't think they're going to be at too much risk of knocking them accidentally. Button positioning is good. I'm not having to sort of stretch and reposition my hand to get to the buttons. And basically, other than that one, that's a bit awkward, but you might just use the other hand for those lower ones. You're probably not going to use that while holding that anyway. But generally speaking, those dials are perfectly positioned get to the AF lock button easily which is good because I want to try um, back button focusing something I only recently found out about despite the fact that I've been using a DSLR for quite a while um, just suddenly popped up on YouTube everyone's raving about back button focusing and I'm like what the hell is that so if you don't know what it is go look it up it's uh, an interesting idea it might actually be really useful Okay, let's pop the battery in. Nice click there and nice reassuring lock there. Uh, yeah, no complaints with that. That's got a nice feel to it. On my Nikon, again, well, I'm bound to be comparing it to my Nikon D3300 which I know is a bottom of the range camera and this is more mid range, but um, it's still, there's not a huge price difference between them. And um, there is, it feels like there's a difference in quality that this is more substantial camera. It's better built, obviously it's weather sealed and things like this door on my Nikon after only about seven, eight months of use is getting very loose. This one has a nice, fairly reassuring click to it. I don't think that's going to get loose. We shall see. Okay, quick uh, power on. See what happens. Please set the clock. Okay. Uh, 
uh, so nice to have a touch screen again my Nikon doesn't have that and one of the one of my main annoyances with it I mean I'll do a separate video about why I've decided to upgrade and and what the issues that I encountered with my Nikon were and they're not major ones um, for its price I've been very happy with the Nikon and got some absolutely cool, stunning photos out of it it really doesn't the photos you get out of it are not what you might expect from a bottom of the range DSLR uh, but it had some weaknesses particularly video um, but also just the fact that it didn't have a touch screen and I was finding that I was having to use the four-way pad here to zoom in to bits of an image to check on focus or whatever and it's just a pain to do that so I'm looking forward to being able to do pinch zoom Okay, I'm just going to set the clock. Okay, the clock setting has been completed. And I was expecting it to kind of go on to the next step now. So I don't... Please set the home area. All right. Oh, okay. Time zone. London, yep. And there's no memory card. That's fine. But let's put a lens on it anyway. I switch off before fitting lenses. In theory you should anyway. There's the sensor in there. It sort of feels like it's a little bit more recessed than on the smaller body mirrorless cameras. I don't know if that's actually the case. Um, but it some people have said to me that, um, have warned me that mirrorless cameras have a propensity to get dust on their sensors if you're changing lenses in a challenging environment. Um, that may be the case, but I think with a modicum of care it should be all right. Okay, over there like a dot. Okay, this is the dots on the opposite side to my Nikon, so that's gonna be take some getting used to. And they turn the opposite way. On and we have live view. There's really just one thing about the design of this camera that is so stupid. That is the placement of the microphone socket. Anyone using this for serious video is going to be using an external mic. And if you're using it for selfie video, then having the mic plugged in there is going to stop you turning the screen past there. I mean, you can still do it by tipping it away. But then, you know, with a with a standard straight inline jack going in there, that's going to be in the way of the screen if you're pointing it at yourself. Right angle jack, I reckon you can just about get away with it. So it's not as bad as I had feared. I had I had wondered if the right even using a right angle jack there was going to come in over the screen. I think just about a right angle jack will avoid most of the screen but then you've got this flappy bit here which is just in the way now that's part of the weather ceiling so you don't want to remove it entirely and in fact there's no sign that you can remove it entirely so again if you're using this for video and you're going to be wanting a mic input it looks like you're going to have to tape this to the underside of the camera or the front of the camera to get it out of the way. It's just... That's, why? Why have you put it there, Panasonic? It's such a stupid place to put it. But yeah, there's always going to be some issues with cameras that don't cost thousands of pounds. 
and they want to leave you with some reason to buy the GH5, which, you know, this is such a capable camera that it's probably going to cannibalize some of the potential GH5 sales away. Still lacks a couple of the pro features that the GH4 and GH5 have, but the image quality out of this is better than the GH4 from what I've seen so far. So, you know, nobody's going to be buying a GH4 now, I don't think, uh, unless they really, really need those few pro features that it has. The GH5, obviously, that's a different matter because that does 4K 60 FPS. It's more capable camera than this one, but this one is, it's so much sharper than previous generation of Panasonic's. So anyway, I'm gonna go charge the battery and have a proper play with it, and I'll see you later.